Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I went about making this custom lightsaber. So this one, it's got lights, it's got a blade that attaches to it, and rechargeable battery and everything. So this is just, this is a great lightsaber. Um, so I started off with just a image of what this lightsaber was going to look like. And I used my 3D programs to model it myself from scratch, which I was pretty impressed with. I'm generally not a very good 3D modeler, but with this one, I took that little bit of extra time and effort and came up with a really good 3D model. After I had the complete model in the CAD program, then what I had to do was cut it up into the specific sections that I was gonna print it in. So that was the pommel, the handle as a separate piece, the mid section, and then also the emitter. So I had three major sections to print, the handle I made with a uh, pipe later on. I took these three models, printed them out on my resin printer. When you have 3D printed parts with resin, there's a bit of post-processing that needs to happen. So the first thing you need to do is actually getting the prints off the build plate. So to do this, I just use a scraper. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend using a metal one, but I'd be really careful so I don't actually scratch the build plate. And you just try and get the plates off as gently as, the prints off as gently as possible. Once you have the prints off the build plate, it's then time to just quickly give them a wipe over with some paper towel to get off any excess resin. Then you take it over to your IPA solution or any kind of alcohol solution that you're using and what this does is clean off any excess resin. So I put it in the resin bath and or the IPA bath and let it sit there for a while. Give it a bit of a scrub with the toothbrush but just let it sit there and let the excess resin be removed. Once you are happy that all the excess resin has been removed, you can then go and clean off all the IPA or the alcohol that's on the print. So to do that, you just clean it with hot soapy water. I have all my parts ready to go. You can see I've got, of the middle section here, I've got two copies of them. It's because this is the first one that I printed and I wasn't happy with how it turned out. You can see all the supports here. I put them too close to the actual model, so I didn't really check it properly when I did it. So some of the supports even here, they're actually, the supports are running through the model. So when you try and get them off, they don't actually come off very easy. So it meant when I went to cut them off like this, they were still attached to the actual model, which means you get all those little marks. So wasn't happy with that at all, which means I redid the supports, printed it, and now I've just got a flawless, flawless one. I've got all my other pieces ready to go. So I think the next step is to start putting them together with the PVC pipe. Um, I've chosen this one specifically because it has this thicker part at the end. So that's actually the perfect diameter to fit the lightsaber blades. So in my 3D model, I also built out a wider diameter in the end there. So this can slot over, go all the way up to the end, and it stops at the end. So I'll just cut this off there, and that's not going anywhere. And then the other pieces will just slot over the top, just like that. So what I need to do is now cut this to size. The way I'm gonna do this is the lightsaber is actually gonna separate at the handle and the midpoint, so that when the light is in there, you can actually charge it which means I want about that much at the end. That should be enough for these. Maybe just a little bit more, because it's always easier to remove more than to go back and try and add some in. So let's go and cut that off there. Next thing I need to measure out is where to drill the hole for the button to go through. So to do that, I'm just gonna Slightly assemble it. And now I can see exactly where the hole needs to go. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and drill that out. So now I've just got to test quickly that all my parts fit together properly and then I can probably start gluing some together. So what I'm doing is I know that that line is center. I'm lying it up there. So I'm going to do is just notch a line in there. So when I glue it on, I've got to match those two lines up. To glue this together, I'm just going to use 
classic super glue. It does the job, it works really good with PVC and it works really good with this SLA resin, which these prints are. And no need to be shy with it, use as much as you want. So line it up and then straight on. And that'll set up, that's set up. So that quick, I can't move it now even if I want to. So the lines are lined up so I know that that is center, is the actual midsection. This bit's gonna be a bit harder to get center. I'm gonna have to do this motion really quickly and then line it up. All right. Let's do this. This bit is always the scariest because if I screw this up now, I'm in a bit of trouble and we'll probably, I don't know what I'm gonna do if I screw this up. I'll probably have to start from scratch because or I'll try and drill out the PVC, so hopefully I don't have to do that. All right, you ready? Done. And that'll set up right there. Perfect, the hole has lined up perfectly. All right, that's the hardest part of the hole build, I reckon, because it is can go so wrong from there, but it didn't. We are all good. I wanna work on the handle. How I'm gonna do the handle so that it can remove itself from there is I've got these couplers and they fit perfectly over that size and that doesn't come off. So that's what I'm gonna use for the handle. To join these together to make a little bit longer of a handle, I've just got some off cuts. So these will glue together like that and then this will glue my pommel on. Again, be quick because Super glue sets up very, very quickly when it's put together in something like this. All right, you ready? That's together, done. So there's a little bit of a ridge there, so what I'm gonna do is take this outside to the belt sander and just smooth that off so it's one smooth handle. I'm not gonna attach this yet. I'm gonna attach that right at the end because this section will be wrapped in leather and this section will just glue on the end after I've completed painting it. Done. Nice and smooth. That is completely flush. You can see a little bit of a gap, but that's just because there's a little bit of a gap between the glue. But that is super smooth. That'll go perfectly on there. So the next stage is wrapping this in the leather. So I'm working, I'm working off that image that you saw earlier from the lightsaber builder. Yeah, the light, the handle grips are about, I'm gonna say two centimeters apart. There's a little bit of an overlap over it, but I think it's about two centimeters apart. This doesn't have to be exact, maybe two and a half centimeters. I don't know how much I need either, so I'm just cutting off what I assume is excess. And then I can always cut off any extra. So this top line isn't super straight. So what I'm going to do is just line it up on my mat behind and then I'm going to cut it. So now I can do my long cut. Gonna be a long process of just glue, wrap, glue, wrap. We have the handle done, ready to go. That'll slot in just like that. So now it is time to paint the pummel and the midsection in the emitter. To do that, what I'm gonna do is block off this inside because I don't want paint getting in there and then just start with a one layer of primer. Gonna prime it first, always gonna prime it first. So let's get to that. Next thing to do is start to get the light section ready. So this just simply pulls apart. There's my lens, which I'm going to use later. Take out the button. 
I need to now cut this in a certain few places. One of them being right here. Now, push this section out. This section out. And that's what I need. So it's quite a bright LED. I'll create a night light, nice lightsaber. And this will slot up into the lightsaber. You can charge it out through the bottom. Easy. So the way I do it is I put the two lenses, a spacer, as well as the lens, and those three combined in the right distances apart create a really nice beam so that goes right up the lightsaber and doesn't waste any of the light. Alright, let's get to putting this all together. So I've got my parts primed and painted in black. Um, Usually I would block off the black or tape off the black and then paint over the silver on top. But the way that this model is, I think it's going to be easier if I paint it all in silver now, mask off the silver, then go back over it with black. So I'm going to go do that now, paint it all with silver. Yeah, we'll go from there. So I've put down my layer of silver. I've taped off where I'm going to be painting black. So most of the emitter up here on the inside will be black. Black rings there, a little bit of black there, and then also on the palmer here. So let's go and paint these black. All right, so it's time to start unmasking these. This is the funnest bit, so let's get started. Time to start working on the D clip ring that'll go on the bottom. So this is the little attachment that I modeled and printed. So that'll go on top, then the D-ring will slide in there and then that side. To hold it in place, I'm gonna add an extra little screw there. So I'm gonna line it up and then just drill. Again, I'm just gonna use super glue for this. It works the best. And then I'm also gonna put some super glue on the screw as I screw it in. And that just means it'll never come off. Just like that, make sure the hole goes all the way through. You can see that it does. So now, I can screw this in. That is never gonna come off. <laughs> Perfect. So, really happy with that. Now, let's actually make the, the D-ring clip that goes around it. All right, to do this part, I've got my pretty thick wire here. Fits in the holes perfectly. So, I just take my two pliers and start bending. There are a few sections on it that I'm gonna be painting this gold color, which kinda, to be honest, looks more bronzy than gold, but that's exactly the color I'm after. So one of them is in these lines here. So I've already done one of them just to test it. So I'm happy that it works. So you can go, go ahead and do the other one. I've got a really small paintbrush here. Get some ink out of the permanent marker and just take my time and stay within the lines. So freehanding straight lines like this very, very hard to do, but I think I did a pretty good job. So there's a little bit of black there, which I want to keep because it adds, it adds an element of depth to it, even though there is no depth. So I'm gonna keep going. Pretty much um, done. So what I need to do is glue the pommel on there. The this is meant to come apart here because that's where when the light's up in there, you'll be able to recharge it at the port at the bottom there. So I don't want to glue that, but it's time to glue this section here. So just good old super glue. Next stage is to start weathering this. So the painting's all done. That turned out great. Like the extra details with the gold there, but now it's time to go over it with the weathering. So to do that, we're gonna use um, primarily brown, 
and silver. So brown for the for the dirt and grime it builds up and then silver for the scratches and the highlights over everything. So let's get to it. So a few things that I need here, a paintbrush. So this paintbrush I'm gonna use for the highlights and it's a, it's a good dry brush, nice separated thistles. And then I've just got a regular paintbrush here that I'm gonna use for the grime. So for the grime, I'm using Burn Umber. It's a great color. It dries nicely to give a nice finish. So with this, it's just imagine wherever there's dirt, um, dirt build up, grime. So it's all in the crevices and things like that. So with this, I'm just gonna go in, put it in and then go back with a paper towel and just rub off any excess. So it's time to now do all the highlights and all the scratches. So I'm using a silver Sharpie. This works a lot better than silver paint as it's a lot stronger of a color. It dries instantly and it allows you to get really small details. Whereas with paint, it's not gonna be as small details. So what you do is you just get a little bit on your paintbrush, brush majority of it off, and then go in, brush too much, go in and just add scratch marks. So this will be pretty much anywhere that the lightsaber can rest or just anywhere where there'll be some, a natural, natural scratches on it. And with that painting done, I'm pretty sure it's time to start assembling this. So, pull it apart. This slides up. So we want this to be really friction fit because we're gonna be using this to charge it, but we obviously don't want this slipping and sliding around. So need something to push it down with. Let's use pliers. So we wanna be quite gentle here. We don't wanna push it too far. You can see the switch is nearly lining up. One more. Done, so. Maybe one tiny bit more. And that is in there. So this is still attachable, just like that. So you can charge, charge the lightsaber. For now, we just need to put the button in, so I've got my little spacer because it's quite deep in there, so I just need a little spacer. And then now the button, which I've hollowed out the inside, so the button sits in there nicely. And now if I press this button, we have a light. Perfect. <laughs> oh, look at that. And it's good, it's got really nice bright light. So, we can test this out with a lightsaber blade. I've got these standard 25 millimeter diameter lightsaber blades, and this should just friction fit into the end. I might have to do a little bit of sanding on the inside because there's a little bit of paint that got in there, so it's made it a bit tighter, but I'll do that in a second, but there we go. Look at that. It's really nice and bright. Very happy with how that's turned out. So, you know, I'm just gonna sand in that, in that um, emitter section and this should be good to go. So the last thing I did was use a bit of the fabric from this bigger sheet I had here, burnt the edges a little bit and burnt the insides to make it a little bit weathered and then just wrapped it around because I thought that would be a nice little addition to make it a bit more used and more yeah more personal so there we go guys that is it completely finished i'm yeah beyond happy with how this has actually turned out just it looks great so we can attach the blade into it and it friction fits in there quite well and there we go in order to charge this what we do is we Pull this apart here. 
we have a USB slot in the end there. So all you need is just a USB extender. You plug that in and plug that end into just a normal USB charger. One additional thing that I also made was this, just this belt clip. So we pull the blade out. So if you want to store this on your belt or anything like that, you just clip it in. This bit loops over your belt, just like that. Perfect. All right, there we have it guys. My custom 3D printed lightsaber that I had just an original image for, modeled it myself, printed it out and finished it to be just an amazing lightsaber. Couldn't be happy with how this has turned out. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you on the next one. Like, subscribe and yeah, see you later.